Goran Voinovich, it's uh, wonderful to see you again. Um, I can see where you are. I can reach out. I can almost touch you, but not quite. Where are you? And then I'll tell you where I am. <laughs> well, I'm at Belletrina Bookshop in Ljubljana. This is uh, our improvised st studio during the pandemic. So we've been here talking to audiences all around the world. Um, so it's actually a way for me to travel around the world in this crazy time. Uh, so yesterday I was in Skopje in Macedonia, today I'm in London, so... It's interesting. Well, that's great. Well, you're not actually in London, you're with me in Wiltshire. I've, okay. um, I'm, I'm, I've been sort of in lockdown and during the pandemic in Wiltshire, so in the countryside, it's been really, really lovely. Um, so I'm about two hours away from London, but we, if you want to, we can be in London. <laughs> we, could, we can transport, teleport ourselves anywhere. Um, but anyway, it's really, really wonderful to see you. And a year ago, um, just over a year ago, you and I were in Norwich together. That was the last time we met at the um, British Centre for Literary Translation. And you were working with the summer school there with your translator, Olivia Hellowell, and you were actually working on this book. I remember it extremely well. I was working with the Italian uh, translators and you were working with the Slovene translators. Isn't it a miracle? And here's the book, you know, the fig tree. <laughs> um, it's an absolutely amazing story. It's very, very different from your other novels. Um, this is your third novel. And now you, tell me about this one, because you wrote this, it was published in 2016 um, in Slovene. And here we are um, just publishing it this month in October uh, 2020 in English. Yes, it's been a long way, actually. Um, it's been a long way for me to write that book. It's, it's, uh, it took me, I think, four years, and two of those four years were very intensive. Um, and it was a whole different experience. As you said, it's very different from my previous two novels. Um, so it was a completely different approach. Uh, I, as I said many times, I think my first two books were two screens. There, there were, I was dealing with the topics that just had to come out of me. And um, I, sometimes I didn't have the control, that's if I look back. But then with this book, I took a different approach and uh, I wanted a different type of book uh, to I'm still dealing with the same topics, but I wanted to put them a little bit aside to focus on some other things as well. So, yes, it's in a way quieter novel. It's, it's dealing with many different things. And of course, it's a very, also very difficult to translate, I would say. So it was a long process, uh, but the one I think especially Olivia, but also me, we enjoyed it. And uh, I think the, the most enjoyable thing was this workshop in, uh, in Norwich when uh, we translated together with uh, uh, some, let's say, students, I think seven of them, and we translated one page in one week. And I could <laughs> see that uh, long process. And, uh, but it was a lot of fun. And you could see how a translator can rewrite your novel in so many different ways. And I think, well, of course, my English is not perfect, but when I'm reading now the translation, I think uh, that uh, Olivia has done a tremendous job. Well, you're a very generous author as well. I mean, this is, uh, so you have read the book in English now, have you? Well, not all of it, I must admit. Uh, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a long book. <laughs> yeah, yes, and, uh, and I've read it a uh, couple times in different languages before. So, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, I would but highly, yes, recommend, I was very I highly curious. recommend it to everyone. As you can see, I've made lots of little notes and so on. And there is that wonderful passage which you translated all of you together, which I think we should read later because it is, um, it is also about the main, the main body of the story. Uh, the story is... As you say, it's very different from your other novels. The first novel I read, uh, Yugoslavia, My Fatherland, which, as you know, I absolutely adored. 
Um, and it, that was more about the history, particularly about the history of Yugoslavia through the, the voice of Vladan. This novel, The Fig Tree, spans many generations and is more, in a way, it's more relatable to all of us in the sense because it is about family, primarily about families and the secrets of families. It's about homes and houses and the earth we live on and, and what it all means to us, what, you know, what all those different things, um, you know, mean to us. And I think that this story is also, um, it is, as you say, it's much more, much quieter, but it's an incredibly beautifully written novel. It's, it's very different from, also from a language point of view, from your other novels. There was so much more dialogue and um, in many ways more dialect, I imagine. I'm sure that, you, you know, that's been ironed out a little bit um, by the translation, but um, it's such a beautiful novel, Goran. It's so wonderfully written. And, and in some ways it doesn't feel like the same novel, the same novelist even. Um, how do you approach each new novel? Because You've written, I mean, you do many different things. You're a storyteller primarily, but you do film, you do TV, you do the, you do, you write and you write columns as well. And when you approach a novel, what, what are you trying to do specifically? Is it very different from everything else you do? Well, yes, the novels are, I, as you said, I do a lot of different things. I, I, I write for newspapers. I, I, I'm a director, I do, I do direct films and I also write screenplays. Uh, uh, but I would say that novels are what I do most passionately, what I think about the most and what I really focus the most on. Uh, and, and, uh, and there's one thing that I really like when I'm writing a novel, it's that there's no hurry, there's no pressure, there's no deadline. Uh, it it just takes its time. Every novel takes its time. I'm thinking about it and thinking about it, and, and I'm playing playing with all different ideas in my head. And when I think that I have something that it's that it's worth enough for me to sit down and write, then I sit down and write. Of course, sometimes I have to wait to finish other things I'm working on, but then. I really sit down and then I'm right and and I'm and I'm writing as long as it takes. I don't I'm searching for the voice. As you said, this language of this book is quite different from the language of my first two books because the character is different. The character who is telling the story is different. He's much more mature. And you're different too. Of course. That's what's so interesting. I mean even I mean I, I always think that you know, each novel must tell a different story about the actual writer as well. And I mean, you're, you're, you've just turned 40, I think. Yes. Um, that's the joy of Wikipedia. Everybody knows everything about you. But no, I, I know that you've just turned 40 because I, I remember talking to you about it last year. And I think that it, that must be a really big moment for you as well. You know, to look back, you were about 10 when, you know, the Yugoslav, Yugoslav wars happened. And this has been your life. You've been documenting your life to a certain degree in these novels. Yeah, because in a way, it's these three novels I uh, wrote so far shows the path I've I've made as not just as a writer, but also as a person. It's it's I was actually a kid when I wrote my first novel, and you can see the, this energy in there. And of course, later I was full of emotions, still some emotions I did understand, some emotions I didn't understand when I wrote Yugoslavia, My Fatherland, where I really wanted to tackle the topics that really define me as a person, the war in Balkans, which left me with so many unanswered questions. And I was sort of in a, you know, in a hurry to just express everything I felt and what I was thinking about. And then, of course, um, after that, I, I was able to really calm down and and first time I approached something, I think as a writer, actually, I said, OK, what how I would want to write something? OK, I have this story I need to tell, uh, but OK, what to do with it? How to tell this story 
in a very literature way, not just letting something out of you. It was, I think it was done with much control, but still, of course, uh, you have, you do never have complete control over what you write. You start something, but then, of course, you live with your characters, you live with your story, and it develops. And it just grows and it grows and you try to some, somehow to stick to your original plan, but then it just, the novel goes its own way. It's called the magic of literature, I think. I mean, it's, it, is, it is a magical um, process, I think. And you are a very literary writer and it's wonderful to see, to see that in this novel too. And you, it, it is interesting because, um, you know, I've, I've always thought you, um, it, sometimes on the surface it looks quite simple and your characters look as though they're just, you know, they're, they're, they're just sort of wandering along, but you can see the great technical skills behind it. They're very sophisticated novels too. They're really, really wonderful. And I think this one is interesting on so many levels. I mean, you've got the multi, multi-dimensional multi stories, I mean, the multi-generational stories, which you know, everybody loves those kinds of family stories you know it's a re it's a real oh my goodness that says so crusade you've got granddad alexander and then you've got the 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 son and the you've got the daughter you've got you've got yana and alexander 1950s starts in the 1950s and then on in istria and then you've got vesna and safet and then you've got yadran and anya and yadran is the 30 something year old who's basically telling the story but the story is told from many different angles i mean it's really it is, um, and it's all based specifically around this house, this area in Istria. And I think that's, again, it's a very Yugoslav story <laughs> because this is, um, it's, it's, which is, which is your, your fate, your identity is, will be probably always telling the story in some way or other. Well, yes, um, I, it, it's always about me and my um, memories, preoccupations, uh, um, my emotions. Um, uh, it's actually this world, of course, it's, it's very fictional, but every aspect of these stories, every character has some roots in my own biography, in, in real people and events. The fig tree in the novel, it's set, of course, in Istria, but in different parts of Istria, in totally different parts of Istria than the real fig tree on which I always think when, when somebody says the fig, fig tree. It, because there is a real fig tree for me, which is very important for me. And it, there, there is also a house where, which is very important for me. And the, the people who used to live there are, are, of course, very important to me. And it's coming from this real world. But then, of course, I just let it become something else. Um, so the fig tree, the fig tree in Istria does exist. I mean, your 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 mother, I think, ca came from that part of the world. Is that yes. right? Yes, my mother is from Pula. And in, yeah, and in front of that house, um, um, where she lived and uh, when she was a young girl and where my grandparents lived until they died is a fig tree and but and for me it, when whenever you say fig tree or, or the fig I will think about that specific tree and that's why I, I let this novel a title the fig tree, or actually it's the fig in Slovenian, which is both the fig and the fig tree. Um, because I think in this image in my head is where it all began. I wanted to write about this world of mine and uh, about the feelings I have about and everything. And of course, um, it's I'm just trying just to find the passage where you mentioned the um the fig tree because there's it's great you use it as a as a as a metaphor you know it's a real tree but it's also a wonderful metaphor as well and um and it and it comes you know at, at certain spaces places during the novel um 
and the figs are in different, they're, they're fresh or they're, they're in decay. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful use of, of, you know, those wonderful fruits that we all love. But um, you could say, and it's actually when Yadran, the very beginning of the novel is when um, his granddad, when Alexander has just died, or, you know, quite near the beginning. And he says, um, before my mind could be flooded with sweet memories of harvesting figs, I saw granddad scaling the thick, strong branches of the fig tree as if seeing a tomorrow that would never come. And that is at that moment, it's that memory. And that's when he realizes his grandfather has really gone. Um, it's a really moving moment as well. And there, and, and in many ways, some of the most moving moments are connected with that fig tree. Um, also at the end of the novel too. Um, no, it's it's re it's really beautiful. Now the, the the novel is full of mysteries. It's full of people leaving mysteriously. Um, it and, and it's not just a device. It really is something. It's these people. They keep their stories to themselves. They don't reveal an awful lot about themselves. There are mysteries all the way through. Now it's not just about the Yugoslav Wars or what happened in Bosnia. It's actually about people why why people don't share certain stories i think you're trying to tell quite a quite a profound psychological story here as well as an historical story is that your intent as well about what people keep closed well of course we can always go back to yugoslav wars but i think what every writer is trying to do is to understand people and of course for me there are mystery it's a, uh, it's a, it's quite difficult for me to understand how we especially in Balkans we talk a lot but say every now and then a little bit uh, uh, how how we communicate in a way that we actually don't use words when we w want to say something um, how we we are hiding and we are often telling more with the things we hide than with those we show. And however, th all these silences actually are much more defining for and uh, than everything what we say. And uh, it's so I was I was trying to to s tell a story about us and with us I think the people I know the people that are close to me but of course uh, they aren't much different than the rest of the people in the world so I was trying to understand the people I love the most but of course with understanding them I'm trying to understand everyone uh, so yes it, it was my intention um, it, because I'm very much interesting in the, interested in the way people are communicating with each other. Um, it was in the beginning. It was very. F it was fun for me. I was actually laughing, and my first novel is full of jokes. I'm making making fun of people in the, the way they are communicating, and uh, there is also some misunderstandings in my next novel, um, and um, of course the, all the all the different stories that are made just to hide the truth not to reveal it and 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 in also in the fig tree i'm dealing a lot with the, how people are actually trying to come close to each other how difficult for them it is to actually um, bring each other together and uh, and how and how even the people who love each other the most when it when the difficult period comes they have so many difficulties uh, just speaking to each other just so that's what you get with yadran and anya of course i mean yadran is uh, she calls she calls him or he calls himself at some point a man of um great mysteries and self-delusions a man of weaknesses and self-delusions that was the the phrase um in english and I mean, I think he's he's a really interesting young man, um, and he's he's the contemporary character, of course. Um, Nineteen, he's in his thirties, and um, 
And it's through him that we see the story of Slovenia now, too. I mean, he is he's born a Slovene because he's born into the new Republic of Slovenia. And that, again, is interesting because, you know, you try to get your head around, oh, my goodness, was it going to be Serb, Croatian, whatever, which languages is everybody speaking? This is always the complex the complexity of a novel from this region is all these different identities, all these different languages. And how does one person cope with having all that inside of them? Well, it's a process, I must say, from my own experience. It, it, it took me a while, and I think it's not much different for other people with similar experiences. Um, because you live, you feel like you're belonging to a different languages, different cultures. Um, you, you want all this wider space to be yours and to, to you want yourself to be able to cross all the borders. But then you realize that most of the people you're surrounded with, have, they don't really understand what you want. And uh, they don't know it's possible. They, they doubt that it's possible to belong like to different cultural spaces, different languages, to be like like they think like it's some kind of schizophrenia. It's um... when I first um, interviewed you about f four or five years ago about Yugoslavia, uh, my fatherland. I remember asking you at the time whether you thought this novel could have been written by a non-Yugoslav, and um, and whether you in any way had any kind of um, longing for that period. That's slightly easier. Easy, sorry, easier time, you know, in speech marks, when things were just Yugoslavia. Do you think you've moved on from that? Do you well, think people, people of your generation have moved on from that? I think we did, yes. I think as you grow up, I think um, you have to close certain chapters. You have to actually answer to yourself to, to deal with who you are. You have to close that book. You have to be certain who you are. I think you you just have to be able to answer to your kids when they ask you who you are, who you are. And I, I got kids in the meanwhile. I know you do. What do you, what do you tell them then? What do you tell your kids? Well, I, I tell them that uh, I'm, I tell them now that they are Slovenians. So it's very simple for them and that and they're still not interested in who I am, so I don't <laughs> tell them. I tell them that the grandmother and the grandfather are Bosnian and that speaking Bosnian. Um, of course, it's much more complicated than that, but it's too, too early for them to be able to, to grasp everything. Yes, but uh, I try to make it very simple for now, but, it's, but it is actually very simple because um, they are, they are now in Slovenia, they speak Slovenian, they are of course Slovenian, what else should they be? And then, of course, some of their grandparents are speaking different languages, so they are something else. Um, but, um, but, but once you have kids, you, you see how very simple the world can be if you just accept it for what it is. Because they don't, they don't know that this is maybe not very usual. For them, this is how it is. And that's the beauty of it. And when, and then you suddenly, you see the world and yourself through their eyes, and you see yes, but this is very simple. It's just the way it is. It's nothing wrong with it. And and so for me, it was. It's not just with the kids, but this period from I think last ten years, when I also I, I with also my writing with everything, I actually made a peace with myself, I found my place in the world. I actually wrote recently an essay when I said that I even don't need a name for what I am and what is my homeland. I can live without the proper name for what I am. Because it know that I, I definitely know what I am and who I am and where I belong and what is mine and what's not. And, uh, and I don't need even a proper name. I don't need to call that Yugoslavia or I don't know, whatever. Uh, it's just that I, I know for myself 
what is important for me and what makes me who I am. Maybe it, uh, when I interview you in a few years' time, when your next novel has been translated, we won't even need to talk about that because that's what's interesting, I think, with each, you know, each generation, it's going to be and each new novel, it's going to be slightly different. But just before we move on, and I do want to ask you about your next novel, but the, the idea of um, ethnic and linguistic origin, now they are essential um, to who you are. And of course, to, um, you know, fitting in, they're essential to this book as well. They are, I mean, it's something, you, you know, however you explain it to your children, you'll never want to escape really, because it's something to be proud of, as you say, in many ways too. And why not speaking several languages is a wonderful thing. You can be very proud of that. But it is essential to um, all your novels, this where you come from. And I think that comes back to this house in, um, in Istria. Um, I know there's a flat in Ljubljana as well, but it is a very important central feature in the novel. Home, belonging, identity, language. Yes, of course. I think, um, as you said, home, I think, is the main word. But what we, I'm, I've been looking to is home. We don't, we, I think my family, we don't have roots or even in the place we had roots, we are been unrooted now with the course of history. Uh, my mother's family has been moving all around Europe for last, I don't know, hundred years. So, but still, we have something we can call home. We know where we belong, even though we are not ethnically the cleanest people and we don't belong mainly ethnically to one place, but we belong to language. I, as I said, I'm, I'm Slovenian because Slovenian is my language, because there's no one who, who can say that Slovenian is more his than it's mine. Uh, I'm writing in Slovenian uh, and I love Slovenian language and I talk with my children in Slovenian language, so that makes me Slovenian more than anything. But beside that, I have also another language I speak and I belong also to many other places, people, um, I don't know, books, films, music. Um, it's, it's, I, I always refer when I say about, for me, geography is very emotional. It's, it's, I think my home is spread around where there are really this places where my memories are and where I'm emotionally connected to them. It's not like they it's not like whole Yugoslavia. They're it's not like it's different kind of space. It's much more closer to the locations of this book actually. The fig tree covers probably much it's covers this homeland better than Yugoslavia these are my places, this is where I belong. And it's a very, very strong feeling reading this book, the idea of home. And in German, they call it Heimat, as you know. And I think it's, it has that kind of essential feeling of belonging. Belonging, maybe, is yeah. the word. Um, and I, I know you wrote this quite a few years ago, and so it must be sort of sometimes strange talking about a novel that's, you know, it's just come out in English too. And that's always the challenge for an author, I think, to put themselves back into that time when they first written it. But it's it's done extremely well. I know it's a very popular and, you know, best-selling novel. It's been translated several times. It's won several awards too. And I, and I, I know why, I think. And there's a passage here that I would like to read very much indeed. And this is a passage that, was actually translated by your, um, your group of translators at the summer school um, last year. I think you know which passage it is. Yes, I know. It is, it is wonderful. And it's a passage I know that Olivia Helliwell, your um, translator, is very um, proud of too, because this is, this is what emerged from the course. Um, and do you mind if I read it? Um, oh. let's, if you've got it in Slovene, you could read it in Slovene and I could read Have you got it with you? Uh, probably there somewhere here, but... Okay, well, let, let me read it in English and then we, we can see, see whether you can remember it in Slovene even. The first ruined house never leaves your mind. 
the first burnt out village you pass through it's etched into your memory and all the ruins you see afterwards fade away over time. You know they used to be there. You know you saw them, but they cannot be recalled. After a while, you don't even see the ruined houses. It's as if they were untouched or were never there at all. But the first house and the first village remain. And so I keep returning to that window on the bus to Behatch, unable to look away from the charred, gaping window frames and the bare, blackened walls from the invisible faces moving through violently ripped open rooms where stoves were once inevitably full of leftovers stuck to the bottom of trays and where sideboards displayed delicate china coffee cups, patiently waiting year after year, never used because war, as it always does, arrived ahead of their special occasion. It's an amazing passage. Um, and I, the re one of the reasons I wanted to read it, not only because it's just extraordinarily beautiful writing, is because it reminds me of the first time as a BBC journalist, I walked, I, I came with a small group. Ah, we've got the book, how fantastic. Yeah, your, we, your secret we, helper came yeah, along and we, found it for you. Um, one of my many assistants. That, it was that moment that um, I will never forget too, when um, the war in Bosnia was still raging and I was with the BBC and I saw a house like that. And it's never, ever, and I'm sure you'll never, ever forget those sites as well. No, it's actually, this paragraph probably, it's very autobiographical. And uh, because also for me, the first trip we made after the war, uh, we were driving from Slovenia. And then when you come to Croatia, then, uh, then you slowly, coming closer and closer to Bosnia or, and of course they're suddenly they're from out of nothing these uh, destroyed houses appear and of course later you go to, to many devastated areas to completely ruined cities and uh, villages burned down completely but uh, these first houses are it, you don't even feel it at the moment but Later, you, you understand that your memories of this, actually these first houses, it, it, was, it was still in Croatia and uh, there was a long way for us to go to, to get to my grandfather um, father and grandmother's place in Bosnia. And we were passing many really terrible places, but this place in Croatia, it's a stick to my memory and, and so it's so it's been actually written right from my memory. Well, that's maybe why it's touched me so much, you know, yeah. because it is, it is wonderful. And I know your students, um, you know, loved it very much too. And they worked for a whole week. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell why. Anyway, have you got, have you found the passage? Yes, I found the passage. So. Fantastic. Let's, let's hear it in, in the original language, in Slovene. Prve porušene hiše ne pozabiš nikoli, prva požgana vas, skozi katero se pelješ, se ti zareže v spomin. Vse roševine, ki sledijo s časoma, zbledijo, veš, da so nekoč bile, da si jih videl, a jih ne moreš poklicati nazaj. Po določenem času porušenih hiš niti ne vidiš več, kakor bi bile cele ali pa jih ne bi bilo. A prva hiša in prva vas ostajata in zato vedno znova gledam skozi okno avtobusa, ki se pelje proti bihaču, Kakor ne bi znal odmaknitni pogleda od sajastih okenskih lin, od golih zoglenelih zidov, od nevidnih obrazov, ki se premikajo skozi nasilno razprte prostore, tam, kjer so bili štedilniki, v katerih so bili vselej ostanki hrane, prilepljeni na dno tepsi in kjer so stale kredence z lepimi keramičnimi kavnimi skodelicami, nikdar uporabljenimi, ker je vojna, kakor vedno prehitela tisto posebno priložnost, na katero so potrebežljivo leta in leta čekale. I know exactly what you said. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that if you're going to be reading the um, that passage from the um, the English translation, it's on page 107, and I don't know which page it is in there. But thank you so much for that too. And I just wanted to um, to ask you what you're working on now. To hopefully another novel. Yes, I'm actually finishing my new novel. It will be out in Slovenia in spring, hopefully. Uh, it's again something completely different. 
Uh, even I, expect, I expect nothing less. Of course, yeah. it's going to be completely different. Each Probably. One is so different. I'm in my. I'm thinking I will return to something like the fig tree. Once, maybe even very soon. But f now I'm. I got this idea, and uh, it was a crazy idea. But then I said, let's do it, and it was the this special time of pandemic. It has nothing to do with pandemic, but um, and the virus, and it it started before the pandemic actually. But um, I said let's do it, and look, I almost finished it. So I also have film that it's been finished uh, from January now, but it's just waiting for some better time. So yeah, it's. So you've got, like, you've got the novel, you've got films. Are you still writing columns as well? Yes, actually, I'm more than ever because I'm writing my Slovenian weekly column as I do for less last 10 years, I think now. I'm also writing from, uh, from Serbian uh, weekly Vreme um, and once a month. And um, I think since the pandemic started, I've been getting calls from all over the place to if I can write this or that. And of course, I say yes, because I don't have anything else to do. I have another film project that has been postponed. Um, there's been a, a, a theater play based on my second book, Yugoslavia, My Fatherland, which was also postponed and um, because it had to be premiered in April and it has been cancelled. And now well, has, I, it, has it been a difficult time for you or have you actually found it quite a productive time well it's difficult but maybe not from professional angle as as much as from personal because my life completely changed i used to travel around i, I used to socialize a lot i used to go to present my books to people not computers <laughs> uh, so yeah it's um, it's of course but um, luckily for me i, I had planned this year to focus on writing, to do some kind of self-isolation, not like this, but I was just, I just have finished my film, which I've been working on last two years. And then I said, okay, this year I will calm down, I will write. So it's, I professionally, I, I was a little bit lucky. Of course, when you have kids at home, when they close the kindergarten, it's, that made life, my life much as a writer a little bit more difficult, but still, it, it's it's much better than it could be, and I'm I realizing that in a way we are lucky. But still, it's uh, when I look now and it's now period of half a year, and I, I see that my life completely changed. Uh, they invited me to go to Poland recently, and I was shocked. I, I was starting thinking, how can I go to Poland? I had I have to go to airplane. And it's, I've been on airplane for last 10, 15 years, every two weeks, and now suddenly, I'm I just I'm terrified of going to airport and to 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 fly to Poland where I've been last year. So, it's it's it makes me actually worried how we're all adapting to this situation so much is like um, some sort of dictatorship when you just adapt you just lower your expectations you know you just accept the situation you realize you can go out you realize you don't have the freedom and you accept it so it's 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 been a difficult but as i said more from a very personal level i think um I you know, I think that's the way you've described it is is it's fascinating, and I think it'll be fascinating also to see what writing comes out of this period. As you say, your next novel is not about the pandemic, but, no, not at you know, all. But, but there are authors who are already beginning to write about this, and um, you know, I've read a lot of poetry from this time as well, and I think it's um, yeah, I don't I don't think it's going to be very positive. <laughs> I think it's going to be a very very difficult and we've got another another you know few months another couple of years another few years of this who knows how long it's going to go on but i do hope nonetheless that we'll be able to meet in person at some point um it is really wonderful to see you and i can't tell you how much i've enjoyed this book the fig tree and i really 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 hope it does well um 
it deserves to do extremely well so let's shout out to everyone watching you've got to buy this book it is called The Fig Tree. It's by Goran Voinovich. It's translated by Olivia Halliwell and it's published by Istros Books. And you'll be able to buy it in all good independent bookshops. I think that's the right thing to say, isn't it? Yes, I agree totally. <laughs> I agree. I think we're in agreement. Goran, send you big, big hugs, kisses. Congratulations on this wonderful book. And, you know, thank you to everyone there. I know that bookshop, the Bellatrina bookshop. So... I wish I were there and, um, you know, wishing you very, very well. and Looking forward to seeing you at some point. And we all want love you and we all want, want to see you soon as well. So let's just hope for better times sooner than later. Anyway, right. Thank you so much, Goran. Thank Take you. Take care. Look after yourself. Bye. Congratulations. Thank you.